Welcome to session two. This week, we're going to look at James' teaching on hospitality. Why is hospitality important for people that are going through trials? Hospitality is important because through hospitality, we're able to demonstrate that we truly are God's children, even as we're facing trials. Throughout the Bible, we see that hospitality remains a hallmark of what it means to be a child of God. All, all the way back in Genesis, all, from Genesis through Revelation, we see hospitality being something that is at the forefront of what it means uh, to be God's children. James uses the example of Abraham and Rahab to demonstrate how hospitality is something that's very important. Now, when James talks about Abraham, he uses the example of Abraham giving over his son, Isaac, back to God as a sign of faith. He's demonstrating how faith and works go together. He also uses the example of Rahab, who gave hospitality to the spies, not only hosted them, but protected them so that they can return safely back to the congregation. Not only Abraham and Rahab are good examples of hospitality, we see Lot offering hospitality to the angels who later on protected him as well. When we read stories of hospitality, we see two things that are very important. One, hospitality is offered to strangers. Now, that's a very dangerous thing because in the time when these people were leaving, strangers were to be feared. Strangers were not to be trusted. So when God told Cain he's going to be a wanderer, Cain said, oh, that's too much of a punishment. Anyone who finds me is going to kill me. So that's why the hospitality to strangers was something that was very different when God's children are asked to be hospitable to strangers, it was risky, it was dangerous. So we should not take for granted that Abraham sees two strangers coming by his place and he goes after them and invites them. That Lot sees the strangers by the gate, he goes and he invites them. That Rahab sees those two strangers who are supposedly enemies and she invites them. So James understands when he asks his, the Christians to be hospitable, he understands that he is asking them to do something that's risky. He understands that he's asking them to do something that's dangerous. But when we offer hospitality to strangers, we not only are able to arise above the trials that we're facing, we are able to move beyond the challenges that we ourselves are facing, but we also allow others, people that are also suffering, to find solace. We also allow people who perhaps are destitute to be able to find a home. The other thing that happens in hospitality is that when we offer hospitality, we also are willing need to be willing to receive something in return. Abraham offered hospitality to those strangers and he received Isaac as a result. Now, the faith that he has, the righteousness that's demonstrated in his ability to now offer Isaac back to God, another form of hospitality towards God. Rahab received protection for her family. When we read in the New Testament, we have the two disciples on the road to Emmaus. Again, they are in a situation where we could say they are going through trials because they are sad, they are disappointed, and perhaps they are scared. Going from Jerusalem where things have just fallen apart, going home to Emmaus where they are leaving everything they knew. And on the road, a stranger shows up. And we read, the stranger acted as if he was going on. And they say, oh, no, 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 stay with us. The night is near. And as they offered hospitality to this stranger, they now receive the greatest message. They receive the hope 
that they had just lost. We had hoped he was going to be the one to deliver us. And as they offered the hospitality, Jesus revealed himself to them. In all of these examples, we see that people who offer hospitality receive something in return. So then there's a need for us as we are hospitable to be willing to also receive something from that. To be willing to receive both the blessing, but also to put ourselves in a situation where we can be interdependent. Especially in the context that James is talking about, James is encouraging the Christians to be hospitable to those who are destitute. And many times when we are in the context of being the people giving hospitality, sometimes we only want this to be a one-way street. I give, but I don't receive. James is teaching us to learn interdependency. And hospitality is also connected to perseverance. Hospitality is also connected to the other things that we're going to study in the letter because that interdependence, that connectedness, is going to be important for us as we learn to live with one another. Understanding our place, understanding the relationship that we have with one another, understanding our dependence on God and our interdependence with one another is going to dictate the way we choose to live with fellow Christians, the way we relate with the outside world and the way we continue to live as God's children. So as we study hospitality this week, allow that concept to shape both how you live, allow that concept to shape the way you view others, allow that concept to shape the way you view God. A God who is hospitable enough to not only open his heart to us, but gave us his only son. A God who is hospitable enough to come and live with us. But when he comes in, we have to be willing to allow him to take over so that the host becomes the guests. We turn our life over to him and allow him to guide the way we should live. And that will be the most important thing of all.